Just gonna take a little stroll here into the lounge. Wow, someone lost part of the ceiling there. That's fun. Looks pretty cozy in here though, right? Nice little couch there, a couple chairs, TV. Whoa, what in the world happened here? What is, oh my God, that's gross. There's milk. We got a nice little box of trash here, just chilling on the counter. Let's check out the microwave. That's nasty, but I've seen it way worse. Let's get out of here. What is that? Is that a biscuit? Just, you know, kind of chilling on the table there. My goodness. I know it's been an absolute eternity since the last episode of DocuCast. I think episode three came out in late April, so oh my gosh, it's almost been a full year. I can't believe that. I'm sorry, guys, if you are a big DocuCast fan, even though I still was uploading like a ton of content. It's not like I just stopped uploading anything, but... I do want to get back to it a little bit. They're easier to record here at college because I can easily, you know, record a podcast and put images on the screen, whereas I can't record a review with my cars because I'm not home. So yeah, we're going to get into it, guys. There's some real talk I want to do, and then we're going to get into some 2022 talk because obviously all that stuff is hitting the world right now in full force, finally. Europe, Canada, Australia, and yes, even the United States. So we're going to talk about the details behind that. I'm sure you guys are probably interested in that. And yeah, we're just going to talk about a few other random things and hopefully just have fun, you know, have a little conversation with you guys. This is supposed to be really casual. And so let's just get right into it. I need to vent to you guys about something that has happened over the last month that really bothered me. And it's all resolved now and it does pertain to the channel directly so I hope you guys are kind of interested in this but basically I have decided that I don't want to use my iPhone to record my videos anymore I want to take it to the next level I want to elevate my recording and so by doing that or in order to do that I feel like I need a camera right a video recording camera and I don't really know which would be the best one to get so I go to Best Buy right Best Buy, they know this stuff, they have all these cameras on sale, and I find a representative or associate, whatever they want to call them, basically an employee, and I'm like, hey, I do product reviews, small items, you need to be able to focus on these, you got to be able to you know, zoom in on small objects, small items, and I'm going to be reviewing them, blah, 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 so I just basically describe it all to them. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he recommends this Canon. I think it's in Canon EOS RP, okay? And that one was out of stock, so it had to be shipped to me. And it really kind of was not ideal because I was going actually back to school. Like school started like in three days. So I was going back to school. And I actually, because the camera was being delivered then that upcoming week, I had to come home from school the next weekend to be able to test the whole thing out. So just because this camera was not in stock, I had to come home. But everything else was in stock. So he recommended like a lens. I think it was like a prime lens, a tripod, which I was a little iffy on because obviously a lot of my videos are formed or filmed just like right on the table there. Like the camera is just sitting on the table or like my iPhone is kind of like resting upon something. You guys know that it doesn't need to be elevated. So it's on the same level as the small cars, but I bought it anyway. And then he recommended a lapel microphone, which I actually am a big fan of. That's probably what I'll start using in my videos going forward. So like a lavalier just like attaches to my clothes and all that. And then obviously like a SIM card. So a lot of items, like it was expensive as heck, all sorts of stuff. And none of it could be tested really because the camera, you know, the camera was not in stock, okay? But either way, I was actually able to find out that the tripod didn't support the weight that the camera would actually be. Like I had this other camera, this older one, and it was pretty similar in weight. And then I looked up the actual maximum weight of the tripod and it was like 1.1 pounds or something like that. And then I realized that when I would actually get the camera and the lens, that would exceed the tripod's weight anyway. So I had to return that. And that's the moment I realized that the employee who helped me look for the camera was not as smart as he seemed. I think that knowing like how much the tripod can sustain like is pretty, it should be known especially since it wasn't even close. Like the tripod was just sinking every time I like put my other older camera on it, right? So anyways, whatever, return the tripod, that was easy. 
Then, so I come home from school the following weekend, my camera's all there and like, I'm excited to test it out. Like I'm really pumped, really hoping it works, right? Because I've had bad luck with cameras in the past. Like, I just feel like I don't know enough. And so that's why I really asked this person. You know, I asked the employee. I really wanted to put it on someone else, right? I want someone else's expertise, right? And I'm working at it. And here, I'm going to put some test footage on the screen here. It just won't focus well. Like, it's a nice quality camera, but it doesn't focus well. The background is like a ghost. Like, you can't see anything in the background, which I'm not a big fan of. And... It's really, this camera is really meant for taking pictures, okay? Like, I don't know why he recommended this to me, but I just can't get to focus on anything. You guys can see here, even when I get to focus on a car, it doesn't focus on the entirety of the car. Only like, I don't know, the front of it and then the back is blurry or if it focuses on like the side of it, then like the front bumper is blurry. So it's really annoying. And I was like, all right, this isn't working. I'm going to go back to Best Buy and, you know, ask the same employee, hopefully, about like what settings I should use. Like I want it to work. Like at this moment, I wasn't even considering really returning it yet because if you return the camera and the lens, there's a 15% restocking fee. So that that basically means that's money you don't get back when you return it. 15% of the original money you spent, they get to keep. So if it costs $100, they keep $15 and you only get 85 back. Okay. So I did not want that. I mean, that's a lot of money because this is way more than hundred dollars, right? Camera lens, they were very expensive. So I go back and luckily the same employee was there and he's, you know, fidgeting with it. He's trying to figure it out. And like, just to no avail, I even brought a cork because it's something small and it had text on it. So it really did the job of a car. You can move it around with your hand, something small. I didn't bring a car cause I didn't want to mess in with any of my cars, even if they were duplicates. I thought a cork would suffice, you know, something easier to carry around anyway. And he's just, yeah, I mean, he agreed. Like he actually admitted that he didn't realize I would be moving the item around with my hands, even though I directly told him I'd be reviewing the product. He thought that I was just going to leave the item like in the center of the table and like kind of move around it. I just thought that was kind of stupid. It's like, bro, I told you I'm reviewing it. I don't know how else you review products and how you show off their features other than moving them with your hands. Like I feel like every single product review on YouTube, whether it be of a camera, whether it be of a watch, whether it be of a phone, how are you able to review it if you don't put it in your hands, right? And so that's just the main like disconnect there. And he admitted like he was wrong or whatever, but either way, it was kind of his fault, right? Then he kind of looks at this other camera, some Sony camera, I think it was, and he couldn't even figure out how to get that one. Like, so he couldn't even find like another camera that would work that I could exchange it for. And this just became a long process. We're in Best Buy forever, like literally two and a half hours. And he's just not figuring it out. Right. And so I'm like, all right, I'm going to have to return this. And he said that you would still be hit with the 15% restocking fee. And I was like, that's nope, not doing that. It was on you guys. I'm not paying a 15% restocking fee when I'm trying to get to work. And it just clearly isn't meant for my purposes. And so he gets the manager. And then like we have this long chat with the manager. And the manager just won't budge. He says it's like a corporate policy that they just can't circumvent. He couldn't waive it. And it was so frustrating. Like this guy, the employee was nice. The manager was not nice. So uh, here we go. I'm just like, oh my God, you know what? I devised like a little plan in my head while I'm at the store, like going back and forth with them. I'm like, I'm going to just try and do this online. So I'm just going to get out of here. Like I'm tired. I need to eat dinner. It's time to get out of here, right? So we do that. I get home, have dinner. Then I talked to Best Buy online. Well, actually, I first tried to figure out the t camera again, see if I could get it to work. And that's when I recorded this footage here with the custom Lightning McQueen that you're seeing. And then I, that's when I realized, like, all right, I can't do it. Like, this review looks terrible. The iPhone that costs about the same as all of this setup literally looks way better and it has so much more functionality. So anyways... I'm like, all right, I'm going to contact Best Buy online and see what they have to say. So that's exactly what I do. I explain it to them. They say they can't help me because it's not an online order. It's an in-store order. 
so everything has to be done through them and to waive the restocking fee that's up to the store's discretion so it's completely opposite of what the manager told me he said it's like a corporate policy that they just can't they just can't do anything about it. no you have apparently the discretion to waive it or to not waive it and you were choosing not to waive it but you were just not telling me exactly why you were kind of lying to me so that was really just, it's like Best Buy, bro. Didn't you like almost go bankrupt like a few years ago? So I kind of get it, right? I get why you're trying to smack us with these restocking fees because you need every penny you can get. And so this woman online, she gave me the oddest suggestion ever. She's like, how about you just take it and try and return it to another store? And I was like, hmm, that actually sounds pretty smart. And so that's exactly what I did. I just packed the camera right back up, made it look nice, and brought it back to the store, and all was swell. So, yeah, everything worked out. I returned it. It was a monstrous waste of time, though, that's for sure. But either way, I was able to return it and get all my monies back. I did keep the SIM card and the lavalier mic. Those are the only two things I kept. So to address the lavalier mic, I will likely be using that now in all my upcoming videos but they probably won't, like you won't see any of them really for a long time yet. Or there might be like one sprinkled in because I do tend to return home in like a few weeks here. But I obviously pre-record a ton of videos already for when I was away, like Forlorn Favorites, Prototype Prestige, like all those episodes will come out with the mic I'm using right now, which is a good mic when it's attached to my computer, which it is now. If I attach it to my phone, the cables just aren't secure enough or whatever and there's that crackle stack pop that you guys might have heard and I think I mentioned it now in a few videos as well so that's why the lavalier mic will work better because it doesn't have that crackle stack pop and I already did use the lavalier mic in my pop Funko collection video okay so yeah that's pretty much the rundown on the recording setup we're still going to be using the iPhone for now because the camera didn't work. Maybe in the future I'll look into getting like a camcorder or something or something like that. Like that seems like maybe more for me for a diecast review. So yeah, guys, just need to vent about that. Like Best Buy, man, they suck. Best Buy sucks, bro. I was not happy with that experience one bit, especially at that particular location in Orland Hills, Illinois. Shout out to the Orland Hills, Illinois Best Buy staff. You guys are subpar. But anyways, now we're going to talk about some 2022 fun stuff. So first of all, I'm just going to kind of show you guys this reveal here. This five pack was just revealed a few days ago. And you guys know five packs are exclusive to Walmart. We have Maddie McGuire here. Mephast Fong, the next gen Rev and Go. Cars 3, Lightning McQueen. You have Bubba Wheelhouse, the next gen Transberry Juice. And then Ryan and Sign Laney, the next gen Blinker. So a pretty boring pack in my opinion. So the three on the left, well, okay, so Maddie McGear and Mephast Fong, obviously, were singles in 2021. Lightning McQueen came with the Piston Cup as a single. Bubba's the best one in this pack because he hasn't been released since, like, 2017. And then Ryan Inside Laney, he was not released as a single last year, but pretty sure, yeah, he definitely was the year before, and he's not very rare at all. No one really covets him. But Bubba is a nice little inclusion here. He's back to being Transberry Juice, so that really kind of confirms like my original theory that NASCAR didn't want Transberry Juice to be the sponsor. So that's why they had to change it to Torqueberry Juice for the NASCAR version of Bubba. But it's nice to see him back here, and this kind of this could be that one picture of Bubba that I revealed on my Instagram like a month and a half ago or something, we did get this stock image of Bubba. Now there could still be a Thailand single version of him coming out, or this could be the only one we're getting. Maybe the stock image applies to that. We really don't know, but it's something worth discussing. I don't know why they would do Bubba in a pack and then as a single. I think it's kind of redundant, but either way, keep your eyes open for this at your Walmart stores. And then this is kind of old news, but I did want to include them in here. We do have a Mini Racers Fimic Missile, which is awesome. So happy they're doing more Cars 2 characters. And then a Mini Racers Dragon Lightning McQueen, which is also really cool. Both of these will be included, I'm pretty sure, in the next wave of single boxes. Yeah, it's great that we're getting Dragon McQueen to go with Tokyo Mater now. I love that this, this line for the minis, they just don't care. Like, they... 
are not trying to fit in any mold. They will do anything and everything in their power. Cars 2, Cars Tune, Expanded Universe, stuff that, I mean, not even in our universe. It's like multiverse stuff. I mean, you get like tie-dye Fillmore, Police Mater, like stuff that I mean, we've just never seen before. So I love the Mini Racer series, the line. It's great. They're very high quality too. So looking forward to those and hoping we get some other minis throughout the year as well. Because so far it's been kind of dry. Like, you know, we got Junior Moon, the Hot Rod version, as our first single box new release. And then we have these two. But, I mean, usually there's like five or six, four to five new minis per box wave. So a little disappointing there, I guess. But at least these are really cool. All right. So as 2022 singles go... Just a few days ago, they were found in the United States, which is super exciting. Very happy about that. It's about time. Everybody's been asking me. I mean, I'm just like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't work for Mattel. I have no idea when they're going to put this stuff out. And it actually doesn't really have that much to do with Mattel. Mattel probably shipped this stuff out a long time ago. But with all the delays at the port on the west coast of the United States... I don't know if you guys know much about that, but you should look it up, do a little research. But basically, like, the port is just jammed. Like, no boats can dock and unload their products to be then trucked to stores or whatever, to distribution centers, to whatever, you know? Not enough labor, not enough people to work. And, yeah, that's basically the main reason for it, along with COVID. And COVID has, you know, something to do with that. COVID really has, like, everything to do with it, but... You know, I guess I'm not supposed to talk about that. So yeah, anyways, that's all better now, hopefully, or at least it's getting better. Either way, 2022 singles case A, or no, C, is hitting the United States. So I think it's C at Walmart stores. And now the kicker here is that there are only 12 count cases. Walmart is only going to have 12 count cases. And that's the only store that is going to have 12 count cases. A lot of people were talking about this the other day. It's just like... Oh my God, why are they reducing case sizes? Oh my God, what's going on? Well, I don't know why everyone forgot that the cases found like in Australia and Europe, like those were 24 count cases. I don't know like why everyone forgot about that, but it's only USA Walmart. So you guys can all relax. Don't worry. And the case assortment should be balanced. It's not like they just drew like a line down the middle and like, like they basically, it's not like they just took the first 12 from the case and, you know, split it up like that. Now, they like balanced it. So like if there were like three McQueens in the case, there's only going to be like one or two now, you know, and it's not like they just drew a line down the middle. Like that is not how it would be. That would be so unfair. So it's probably still not ideal, though, because even if you were to do that, it's not like there are 12 unique cars in a case. Like there's more unique cars than that. So that's a little bit problematic. But I think it might be better in the long term so Walmart can get in more stock. Instead of getting a ton of stock in at first and then just having it sit there and not sell, not sell, not sell, and then Walmart getting cold feet and not ordering anymore. So I think this actually will be beneficial in the long run. You just got to have an open mind for it. So yeah, this case includes like Davey Apex, which they're calling Dave Alternators. That's fine with me as long as they don't call him TG Castlenut. I think you have Murray Clutchburn in this case as well. Mater. You have like a Lightning McQueen, I think. So some cool stuff in this case. It's obviously nothing spectacular, nothing new, of course. But either way, it's still nice to see them out and about. I will definitely pick some up to keep in the package, even though these are going to be super hard to store with the new blister sizes that conform right around the die cast. Honestly, these are probably better to hang up instead of putting them in like my storage container. So actually, I might do that. And then also I want to mention that 2022 Deluxes are now being found in France. That's the first place they've ever been found. So that's your case with Barney Storman, Miss Fritter, Rotor Turboski, Van Scanlane, and I think Red and a Cars 1 Mac. So that's kind of exciting. Barney Storman's a pretty cool inclusion. And then two packs. That leaves two packs that are the only item that has not been found anywhere yet. Yeah, anywhere, nowhere. Very sad, honestly, because two packs are the only source of a technically new release so far and that is Mater with the working tow hook so far that is the only new release out of all the 2022 stuff right 
Canada is getting, I think, case B with Miles Axelrod with microphone, I believe. Or is it just regular Miles Axelrod? I don't know why they're doing two. I think Ralph Carlos in that case as well. It's so weird. Like every country kind of got like a different case in. I think like England and the rest of Europe got in case A. Australia got in like maybe A and B. Canada got in B or C. And then we got in C here in the United States. I don't really know what's going on. And everything will become a little clearer in the coming weeks here as they have more and more stores and more people are able to do full reports of that. But yeah, don't worry guys, everything is coming to fruition. If you're in the United States and you want to find some 2022 cars, go for it. I think Virginia was the first place they were found. I know people have found them though in other spaces as well. So definitely go hunting if you are able to. If you're locked into the snow world, the tundra like me here, then probably not the best idea. But yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in terms of just like 2022 Disney Cars diecast. There was another little funny story I wanted to mention, though, about DHL. Another little mini rant, I guess. Basically, I ordered two prototypes from this guy in Mexico, and DHL lost them, and they declared them lost. So basically, when they declare them lost, they say they're not looking. They're like, yeah, they're lost. They're gone. We're done. <laughs> I'm sorry. And so they were trying to like work with the seller to reimburse him, because obviously, that's just how it works. They don't reimburse me. They're supposed to reimburse the seller. Who will then reimburse me and they were expensive like as prototypes are and so anyway apparently whatever reason like they just weren't reimbursing him and maybe it's because I remember I talked to one of the people on the phone from DHL and they're like yeah we're trying to find replacements for them online and I'm like bro like you won't be able to find them like they're one-of-a-kind prototypes and he's like yeah you know if we if we could just go to Walmart and find them like that would just make our job so much easier but obviously we can so we have to find them online I'm like bro how many times do I have to tell you <laughs> you most certainly can't find them at Walmart and you definitely will not be able to find them online they are one of a kind prototype Disney cars and he just wasn't getting it. So maybe that's why they just can't reimburse him because they don't believe that they are irreplaceable cars. They just think they're toy cars and they could easily be rebought. And they don't want to just fork over like $500 to reimburse the seller. So either way, that kind of stinks. But I will be able to get my money back and get a replacement of a different prototype, I think, from the seller. So hopefully that all goes well. But basically... DHL dropped the ball on that customer service just yeah customer service took a little out over the last couple of weeks Best Buy and DHL not not ideal it really was weird too because I ordered like two packages from two different people in Mexico via DHL at the same exact time the other came immediately like within a day not even kidding you and the other one got lost so it's like oh you win some, you lose some, I guess. The other package was Battle Force 5 stuff, so it's like, ooh, I don't know which I would have preferred to get lost, to be honest. I, I was really happy with the Battle Force 5 stuff I got. But yeah, that's pretty much it for Docket Cast, guys. I do kind of also want to foreshadow what I want to talk about in a future Docket Cast or just a future video in general. On Instagram, every weekend I post a Marvel and Disney cars crossover picture that I, I just love to do these like I just found the passion in making these I don't really know why like they don't really do anything like they're just pictures that I put up and I don't do videos on them so I might actually start doing videos on them or maybe in the next episode of docket cast I'll explain each one kind of go through the thought process and tell you guys how I made them I think it would be a nice way to kind of intertwine the hobbies a little bit get people from cars interested in Marvel and maybe get people from Marvel interested in the cars even though I think that one's a little bit more of a long shot. Even though that's, yeah, that's not how I went. I went from cars to Marvel. I always preferred cars from the get-go. But, yeah, no, we'll see how that goes. Check out my Instagram for those little pictures. I think they're really cool and fun. And, yeah, thank you guys for watching episode four of DocketCast. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts and everything. And if you've found any 2022 cars, let me know in the comments below. That was a cool little rhyme. All right, guys. Bye now.